today, I want to talk about a topic, and here we do, I'm going to try to work on this, about our character. Character, a matter of choices, plural. Here's what some people say. Well, your character is the one thing you cannot borrow, lend, or escape, for it's you. Yeah. It's probably one of the best ones. Character is, in the long run, the decisive factor in the life of individuals and of nations alike. Amen to that. Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired, and success achieved. Old age is inevitable, but wisdom and maturity are not. Amen. I will give a little bit of kudos there to Courtney from last week saying I'm a little bit embarrassed to say this, but she basically said that, and that's true. That's true. And we know people, right? People that are young, and they, they have a wisdom about them, and you go, wow, that, that, they're, they're an old soul. They, they kind of figure things out. And then we've met people that you go, dude, at your age, you know, grow up. Anyway, that's a, I love that one because that is, I love that one. A couple of other ideas. Forbes published an article several years ago discussing about the benefits of an Ivory League education. One CEO noted that after about five years on the job, what determined the trajectory of someone's success was not the Ivy League education they got, but rather the character that they held. Amen. Yeah, that's the point. Character is what you carry. Character is what lasts. Character gets in the way or character helps. A study done at Harvard, over 1,000 participants in 2022 found that those acting with high moral character were associated with a lower risk of depression. Further research even suggests that character strengths such as spirituality, gratitude, love of learning, kindness, and persistence, to name a few, have robust links to well-being and are most longly connected to a, an overall life satisfaction. Proverbs has so many, many statements about our character. So many. And whereas the Proverbs proclaim that our character has a very profound impact on our life, the good news is that our characters can be shaped. They can be influenced. They can be molded. And yes, they can even be changed. It's that part of you that you have the final word. There are so many things about us that we don't have the final word, <laughs> the shape of our eyes, the amount of pigment or not in our skin, what types of gifts we have that help us do things well, how tall we are, what ethnic we are a part of, and the list goes on and on, but the quality of your character is the result of choices we make and we've made and we continue to make in our lives. And the Proverbs and other places in God's Word do make it very clear that there are two, and only two options, when it comes to how we allow our characters to be impacted and shaped and molded and influenced. There is God's way, there's God's wisdom, and then there's man's way, or the wisdom of this world, or the wisdom of this age. There's only two. You get to pick. You can pick which one, but there's only two. There is no door number three. Sorry. There's just one or two. And what we pick and how we do it has a profound influence. Listen to how James says it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let, him show, let, let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly and spiritual, and spiritual demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace, raise a harvest of righteousness. James says there's two. There's two. Paul says it this way. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, 
But to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent. I'll frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God for the foolishness. If God is wiser than man's wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Paul says it over, over and again. And when we go to the book of Proverbs, what we see is that there are two choices. In Proverbs chapter 9, which we're going to be at in just a minute, what we see in that passage is that there is a woman of wisdom and there's a woman of folly. And both of those women call out to people. And we'll see what they say in just a minute. In fact, in Proverbs, there really are four women or four ideas that are personalized as a woman. The woman in chapter 7 of Proverbs, the whole chapter is about adultery and what that adulteress does. And then you read that chapter, it's all too familiar how that plays out in people's lives. In fact, the adulterer is a destroyer of character. If you're going to be a person of godly character, not perfect, but godly character, you're going to avoid that woman or that man, for they destroy. There is nothing good about it. In fact, if you, when you read that chapter, of course, it describes, it gives an description of the, a young, simple man going out in the evening, and lo and behold, there she is, and he gets swept away. But today, I'm afraid it's even easier than that, right? You can go on your phone and download an app, and here we go. It's not that hard anymore. You don't have to go searching out. I'm afraid it's all too clear. The second woman is the woman of wisdom that we're going to look at in just a minute. Chapters 8 and 9, two chapters about what wisdom is like and how it calls out to us and urges us to be a certain kind of person. Chapter, the third type of woman is the woman in folly. We'll see her again in just a minute in chapter 9. And then, as Teresa referred to earlier, the woman that is the wife of a noble character, Proverbs 31. And there are some similarities between the woman of wisdom and the woman of a wife of a noble character. Two choices. The path of wisdom or the path of folly. Which one will we choose? And we will choose. And it will profoundly affect your character. And it will profoundly affect the trajectory of your life. It will. So let's listen to see what they say to both of us, to all of us. In Proverbs chapter 9, We'll start reading in verse 1. Wisdom has built her house. She has honed out seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has set out her maids, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come in here, she says to those who lack judgment. Come and eat my food. Drink the wine I've mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. And then the woman of folly is in verse 9, 13. The woman folly is loud. She's undisciplined and without knowledge. She sits at the door of her house and at the seat of the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way, that all who are simple come in here. She says to those who lack judgment, stolen water is sweet, food eaten in secret is delicious, but little do they know that the dead are there and her guests are in the depths of the grave. Here they are, side by side. The woman of wisdom, she has worked hard. She's built. She's hewn. She's prepared. She's mixed. She sends others out for everybody to come in. She has worked, and now she wants to give. And you can probably deduct, if she works that hard to get everything ready, what she's going to say is not going to be inconsistent with a character that has worked so hard. And then she says, come all who are uh, simple, come in here. She says, she says, 
I'm going to call you to repentance. You need to leave your simple ways. That is a profound difference between God's wisdom and man's wisdom. When God calls us to follow him, you can't just do it as you always have. There's going to be a change. You're going to have to do different. And then it says to take on a lifestyle. She says it this way. She says, leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. It is a call to be different, not just to have a couple different habits in your life, not just to check a couple boxes. To do this, you have to live differently. And the woman of wisdom, well, folly, she's loud, she's boisterous, she's disciplined. She hasn't built anything. <laughs> she just sits at the door. She sits at the highest point of this gates of the city, and she too cries out to the simple who lacks judgment. But notice what she says. She doesn't call them to change. You don't have to change. In fact, she appeals and says, hey, stolen water is sweet, she says. Food eaten is secret is delicious. Hey, you know what? You can choose me. It'll be fun, and there's no consequences. Boy, haven't we heard that approach to life. Doesn't doesn't cost you a thing. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about it. Oh, they're just being old-fashioned. Oh, they're just being too hard on you. But as it says, she seduces with false promises, false promises she, or promises she can't keep, and she doesn't care. The people die. How does it say? But little do they know that the dead are there. Her guests are in the depths of the grave. And if we just think for a moment, we just think for a moment how that plays out in everyday life. How many books, how many plays, how many movies, how many shows where if somebody starts out following the folly of the woman of wisdom or the woman of folly, it ends that way. There's tragedy, there's sadness, there's broken families, there's broken lives, there's death, there's destruction. Oh, that wasn't what was said was going to happen at first. It never says that at first. It only happens later. There are two choices. We get to choose who we listen to. Both cry out. Both make appeals. One is not silent and one is loud. Now, maybe one, as it says, is boisterous. It's, it's you know, maybe it makes a bigger noise, so to speak. But the consequences, the scriptures say, the consequences, the character to your life is profoundly impacted by which one of these we listen to. Right. We have a choice. We always have a choice. We're not victims. We are not victims. Don't believe that. We listen to one or the other. What we choose maybe has a profound impact in terms of where we didn't think we'd end up. But you're not a victim. Don't believe that. All right. If, if we're going to have one or two choices, if that's the choice, then how do we get wisdom? How do we get to where we're going to be listening to the right voices in our lives? And I'm going to close with this. There are three things in the scriptures that tell us how to get wisdom. It says, if you do this, you'll become wise. The first one is in James. Oops. Is in James. No, I'm sorry. Here we go. Thank you. James 1, 5 through 8. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to those without finding fault. It will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because those who doubt, the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. This person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. If anybody lacks wisdom, not just for certain people, anybody, man or woman, Educated the highest levels, not educated the highest levels. Anyone, he says. God who gives generously. The character of God is what is held. That's who helps us trust in God's character. He's generous. 
He is gracious. He shows no favoritism. We live in a world that shows favoritism all the time. But God doesn't show favoritism. He'll listen. He'll respond. All we have to do from us, and he requires, is we don't doubt. Which I get it. Sometimes that's easier said than done. But that is what he asks of us. The next two are not quite, shall we say, cut dry. The second area is gaining wisdom through observation. One of my favorites. Proverbs 24, 30 through 34. I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of someone who has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my, I replied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief, and scarcity like an armed man. The idea of learning wisdom from cause and effect. This is what happened. This was the result. Solomon says, I put the two together. Now granted, he knew who the guy was. It says, I went past the field of a slugger. He, he must have known that, Okay. And he started deducing about what he saw from that kind of lifestyle. One of the most powerful things you can do is to pay attention and make observations and draw conclusions about what's happening in our society and in your life and in your friends' lives. Granted, we may not know everything about every person that you come in contact with and that you draw a conclusion from. But the, our culture sometimes has these subtle messages to us that says we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't look at a situation and draw a conclusion. We don't want to be judgmental. We don't want to be hypocritical. We don't want to send some... No, listen, Je Solomon said, look, I, I saw some things and I drew some conclusions from it. I'm afraid sometimes with our younger people, they get frustrated because somebody who's an older parent is going... I've seen this story before. I think we know where this is going. What is your parent or your older sibling or your loved one saying? He said, look, I've, I've watched past people like this, and I can tell you where it's going. Oh, you just aren't whatever. It's a biblical concept. You look, you make deductions, you draw about conclusions, and you make choices. Yeah. And our culture may not encourage you to do that. We're not saying do it in a self-righteous, arrogant, critical way. It's just, dude, ooh, I don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, it says similar. Remember, you leaders who spoke the word of God to you, consider the outcomes of their way of life and imitate their faith. People that are spiritual, that you respect. What are you doing? You're looking at where that led them. And you go, I don't want that or I do want that. And the third and final way, the scriptures say, maybe not the final way, but the third and final way for this lesson. Wisdom by walking with the wise. Proverbs 13, 20 says, Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harms. You know, I, uh, another one of those where you have to make some decisions. You have to draw some conclusions. What's this person like? Walking in the scriptures does not mean that you are walking literally, physically along with them as if you're going to get their wisdom by osmosis. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Well, you could just walk by and if I'm within five feet, I get what they'd be really good at. But that doesn't work that way. It's talking about learning from them, asking questions, considering what they say, weighing it, evaluating it, open the scriptures. Is that what the scriptures say? But if you're walking with them, then it can impact you. And again, you choose that. You choose who you go walk with. You get to do that. It's in your decision-making mode. We're not a victim. You get to see, I'm going to choose that person, or I'm going to go talk to him to see if I should choose that person or not, because I want that influence or not in my life. You know, there is so much we can't control. There's a lot. We, and sometimes we're so mad because we can't control it. 
And it's easy to slip into the victim mode. I get it. But when it comes to our characters, our precious characters, you have a choice. You get to choose. You choose one of two, God's way or man's way. That's all you get. You don't get door three, four, five. It's one or the other. But when you choose it, it has profound implications to our lives. The woman of wisdom calls out. The woman of folly calls out. Who will you listen to? It's your decision. It's your choice. And the implication will be your own character. May God help us to be humble and willing to listen, even when it's not easy, when the words of wisdom come our way. Amen.